Hello the world. I want to show you a thing that I do. Um, I have an Ableton Live set up where I play music in Ableton Live and I want to also play videos that are synchronized um, and I want to use Touch Designer to do that because it's free or at least the free version is free and that'll work for us. Um, so how do these communicate? I don't want to touch Touch Designer when that's finished, I just want to perform in Ableton and have the videos come out automatically. So, um, the way that we are going to get these programs to communicate is through TD Ableton, which you can learn how to install and hook up by yourself with a different tutorial, because that's not my problem. Uh, <laughs> And let's pretend this is our live, like, performance setup, I guess. It's, yours is probably more complicated than this. Um, but TD Ableton, I, I'm selecting it and pressing I, just so you know. And I'm going to use the parameter component. And I'm going to bring it out, copy it and bring it out here. And... All we're going to do is get that to listen to a super simple thing. This is a blank MIDI effects rack with one macro. And we're going to hook that up like this. We're getting this little number right across into Touch Designer. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, trust me, this is huge. Okay movie movie file in that's what we want banana to banana um <laughs> we're gonna run these through a switch 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 learn to type switch <laughs> this is embarrassing for me out Run these two bananas into a switch and send it out. Banana switch. Um, I'm gonna have two different pieces of media on these. And it's gonna be pretty cool. So this is a knob that switches between two videos. Boom, boom, boom. And then, you, you know, you can see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna make this knob do that. Um, I'm going to do that by getting a null. This is the best practice. Uh, whoa, not the right button. Viewer active is the button I want. And now that the viewer is active, I can click and drag that onto the video switch. And then check this out. Boom, boom, boom. I'm doing that with Ableton. Um, this is huge. Because then we can make a clip, a little dummy clip. This is going to be, you know, the same kind of clip that launches MIDI uh, clips and audio clips. And now it's a video clip launcher. Incredible. Clip two, clip one. Um, so this is like the simplest possible setup for launching video clips. Um, and this might be all you need. You know, you're going to go to your perform thing, get this window, and send it to your projector, and then, like, play in Ableton to your heart's content, um, probably with more than two videos, but you can extrapolate this out, and, like, yeah. Um, but you might notice some problems with this. First problem is that both of these videos are playing, even though only one is being displayed. So if you have like 10 videos, your computer might not be happy running a heavy live set and a heavy video set, and it's doing all this unnecessary thinking behind the scenes. Um, okay, so we want this to stop. See, these have a play, stop kind of transport control. And we want a signal that can control these and get the ones that are not being displayed and just make them stop, right? How do we do that? Oh, I'm gonna name this. 
Um, switch. No, or whatever. Oh, that didn't like being renamed. Is it because I did a... Let's experiment, let's experiment. Um, let's do a chop export into it instead of a chop reference, and then rename this. Switch, learn to type, null, and that did not break it. Okay, so I guess that's one advantage of doing export instead of reference. I'm still learning this stuff, um, clearly, and where was I? Oh yeah, so we want to control the playheads of these video players. Um, so we're going to make a parallel output from our parameter and run that into the fan. So the difference between the fan and this raw parameter is that this is like one number that's changing like on one channel and this um, gives us an on off kind of signal on all these different channels. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, actually I should best practices null this out and I'll call it play or whatever. This goes to the play of that and channel two, which is number one on the MIDI macro because computers just be careful that the one that you want is actually connected to the right thing but now this one is being displayed and it's playing this one is not being displayed and it's not playing and now they switch boom isn't that great um, I'm gonna make these start switching automatically because I can um, so another problem you might notice uh, they're picking up from where they left off when we trigger them, which might be okay for you if your videos are not like edited to the music, they're just like vibes, they don't need to be synced, or if you you just have like a little gif or something. Um, but for me, a lot of the time, I do want the video to start at the start when I trigger it. So uh, there's this Q button, and we're gonna we're gonna send that a little pulse when we trigger stuff. Um, these are not pulses, these are what I would call gates in modular language or whatever. Um, to get a little pulse, I think that comes from the, l oh no, that's not right. <laughs> I grab this and then I press tab and then I go logic, boom. And logic has a cool thing that says on when value changed. Look at it. Blip, little blip, and I will null out this blip. Uh, okay, the reason I'm nulling things is because um, when you do that, you have the option later to go back and say, you know what, I want to insert an operator here, I want to go lag. I want to lag this, and then I want the switch to respond to that. And now look, it's crossfading. Do you see the fade? And then I'll bypass the lag, and it, it's a hard switch. Um, so like, if I if I just connected this parameter straight to here instead of using the null, then I wouldn't have been able to do that. That's why we null things out before we send them. Um, anyway, here's our Q thing. We're gonna use this to trigger or pulse our Q. Let's clean this, this looks good. Um, sure, yeah. Um, viewer active, movie file one, Q, pulse, export. You feel me? Now check it out. When it switches, 
the videos go back to the top. Yeah. Um, I actually like a hard switch because the songs do a hard switch, so then we don't need this lag. Get rid of that. Um, so this is the setup, like, you know? Um, so, and when you want to have more than two songs in your set, you just make another movie file thing. It's in the purple. Movie file in. Boom. Banana. Put that in. And then tell, uh, tell it its play information and give it the cue if you need to. And, you know, let's give it a movie with some actual motion to it. I like number four, sure. And then we just trigger it with one of our cool little clips. So this should be on two. Boom. Hey, there it is. Um, these can be hard to like get, right? Um, I press shift and you can get the number you want really specific when you're dragging that. And I guess I should label these and I can go video one, video zero, two, and um, they're playing nicely. They're doing what we want. This is incredible. This is mind-blowing technology, you guys. Um, this took me so long to freak to figure out. Um, yeah, so, okay. So once we have this and we're happy with it, we can just go perform, um, open this window, and your crowd is gonna love you. They're gonna have some nice, pretty colors and pixels to gawk at. And, you know, you'll be on your way to victory. Um, obviously, like, you can do more, you can, like, mess around with the video after, if you want. Look, this is all I wanted <laughs> when I was, when I was trying to do this. So, hook up TD Ableton, get these three signals, these are the signals you want, and, um, go to town, you know? Alright, enjoy, you guys. I hope this helped somebody. Love you. Keep being creative. You're the coolest. <laughs>